Herbie's hanging out on shore with Morty and letting him run around a little bit. So while he's doing that, I am going to set up the hammock. mostly make sure they're okay while they're coming back. And my iPad so that I can work on the latest video for you guys. <laughs> so it's what I do. desperately need showers right now, uh, including Morty. This is what we do to shower on the boat. We have an insecticide sprayer here with a little sink nozzle hooked up to it. And what I did was cover the whole thing in Batman duct tape so that it would be solar heated and we can have hot showers on the boat. So it's been sitting out all day and we're going to be able to have nice warm showers. Now how this works is you twist the nozzle and then you pump. So you have your pressure built up and you're able to get a nice warm stream. Now Herbie and I are both able to shower, and Morty actually, able to shower with just this much water. It is two gallons, so in it, with this way of showering, we only use up two gallons of water for all three of us, which is pretty amazing. So it works really well, and I highly recommend it. The little boat shower. Oh, it's a shower. <laughs> oh, it's a shower. It's shampoo. Oh my gosh. It's Herbie's turn. <laughs> important thing with showers, do them in a not crowded anchorage <laughs> or where there's not a lot of people around for reasons that you can only imagine. <laughs> Morty, come on. Come on. You went swimming. Now you need your bath. Come on. Over here. <laughs> yeah. You gotta rinse that salty water off of you. We gave him a bath recently. It's just gonna get some salt out of it. There's a sad squirt. <laughs> he won't even look at us. <laughs> You're free. Go on. You're free. <laughs> I've just steamed one of these Japanese, um, I actually don't know what they're called, but it's like a puffy, fluffy bread meat thing. Oh, yes, it's so fluffy. I can't wait to eat it.
So last night we decided that today we would either sail up the St. Mary's River and hang out around there or just stay in St. Mary's or sail to Smith Island. And our determining factor, kind of like the coin flip in our case, was the wind direction. So we decided if the winds were going to be blowing into the river, we'd go up the river. If they're blowing out, we'd head out and head to Smith Island. Well, today they're definitely blowing out, but we're going to stay here because this is what it looks like outside. So there's a light misting rain and just some general not good weather happening around us. So right now it's kind of calmed down, uh, but Hurricane Jose is uh, getting quite close and tomorrow he's actually going to be right next to us, just you know, a few hundred miles away, so we're just going to get some bad wind, uh, some rain, but not nothing like the tropics saw. So you can see the visibility is pretty much squat, and it's not really the best of situations to head off into. Looking at passage weather, you can see this is uh, the remnants of Hurricane Jose, which still looks pretty darn like a hurricane, even though it's quite north. So we are currently located in here, like in this little hook of a river. We're right at the mouth of that. So our plan is to head over to Smith Island, which is over in this area. The cool thing with this is we can watch how it progresses. So this is three hour increments. And you can see the hurricane is pretty much going to be right next to us tomorrow. So this is 24 hours from now, so tomorrow on the dot. And 36 hours. And then in 48 hours. So by Wednesday it should be gone, and then if we want we can set sail and ride the tailwinds of the hurricane as it leaves into unprotected waters with a lot less risk of it actually deviating and coming in. So we're gonna keep an eye on how things progress and we'll play it safe. And then the fun thing, Jose kinda dissipates and heads back as you can see. And meanwhile, the next one makes its way up. Starts coming up this way. Uh, it's a pretty active season. So we're not leaving for Bermuda right now because as you can see, that's where we want to go and this seems to be where all the hurricanes want to go. So we're just going to wait it out until the hurricanes die down and then as soon as they're done then we'll leave Norfolk and head straight for Bermuda. And then as per usual in the Chesapeake, it cleared up. <laughs> so the rain went away, the sun's come out, the winds have died down, so we decided, eh. Let's go sailing. <laughs> Jose is coming up the coast. It was more like, let's go sailing! Yeah. So Jose is still coming up the coast. And as wise sailors on board Wisdom, we have chosen to get 20 miles closer to the hurricane. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> let's go. For once, the waves are going with us. So it barely looks like we're moving, but we are going four knots. We have three reefs in though, so Herbie's gonna shake out two of them, so we're just reefed down one, and then possibly we'll shake out that last reef. But uh, we like to take it on the careful slow side, just to begin with, and go one step at a time. So we're sailing, yay! And we're going to Smith Island for real this time. Well. Well, we really hope so. Mm -hmm. And we're heading from fair weather into a storm simply because we got itchy feet and really want to just get out of here. And the wind's going in the right direction. So, yes. That. Safety first. We're going out in exciting weather. Got to make sure you are prepared in the safest way possible.
So with that, we set our mainsail, which we call Monty, with one reef, simply because it's super calm, everything's relaxed, there's very little apparent wind over the boat, because we're heading downwind with the wind. So if the wind's blowing 10 knots, or for land terms, say it's blowing 10 miles an hour, and you're running with the wind at a speed of five miles an hour, the wind you feel in the back of your head blowing past is only five miles per hour. So it doesn't feel like much wind. And then if you come to a stop, all of a sudden that's 10 miles an hour of wind on your head. And if you turn around and go the other way, now you have 15 miles an hour of wind into your face. So the same thing holds true when you're sailing. So we're going downwind. It feels like, honestly, like maybe 10 knots of breeze. It's nothing major at all but we're also doing five knots. So that means there's actually 15 knots of wind blowing. And if we start heading upwind at five knots, then we'd have 25 knots of wind on us. So in that case, we're keeping the sail smaller. A very good rule of thumb when you're sailing for safety reasons is never fly more sail downwind than you'd be willing to fly upwind. So in keeping with the, we're heading into a storm and have less sail up, we're going to raise our head sail, which is our jib, uh, but with a reef in him. So he's set up for two things. So when he's the full sail, he's called the blade jib, which is a very flat sail that has a very low clue and a very flat low foot. And the reason for it is it points upwind like a beast. So that's really good for going upwind. The moment you turn off the wind and you're going downwind or side to the wind, you have to ease him out so that way he's flying you know, to the side of the boat, not pulled in over the boat and all of a sudden he twists and it just doesn't work well. So for storm situations we can put a reef in him just like our mainsail and make him smaller. But we had the reef on our head sail set higher so that way the clue is higher. So when we reef him he actually turns into what's considered a Yankee jib which is great for reaching and running. So we're going to set him up with that scenario right now. So I'm going to set a reef in our head sail and then we're going to raise him as a Yankee jib. So there, our jib is set with the reef in him. So you can see he doesn't make it all the way to the head of the mast. And his clue is significantly higher. So the normal clue is actually down near the lifelines over here. We actually have the lifelines sloped down that way they don't interfere with the clue, with the foot of the sail as we're tacking. Uh, but here he clears everything, the clue's much higher, and he's a much better reaching sail. So in these conditions, it would be nice to fly them full, but we simply don't need the sail area. What we need more is the lack of twist that we're able to control uh, using him in a reefed position. We are cooking. Next time on Sailing Wisdom, we hit some pretty extreme conditions and end up going to a much safer anchorage. Herbie steers valiantly through the process. Thanks so much for watching. And if you want to become a sailing buddy, you can click the link down below to our Patreon account. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. And when you click subscribe, make sure you click on the little bell in the annotation. That way you get notifications as soon as our next video is uploaded. Thanks so much.